The Pac-12, there was a report over the weekend, <laughs> and it just cracks me up. Uh, the, the most duh comment possible was the 247 report that Pac-12 is unlikely to add Hawaii in expansion. Yeah, yeah, we knew that. We knew that the Pac-12 was not going to add Hawaii. Uh, John Canzano, in his mailbag, actually talked about it. Because somebody asked, I saw a piece last week about Hawaii maybe being a candidate for Pac-10 membership, which I like how they've already changed the name back. Uh, new stadium underway and not a bad TV market. Wonder what your Fox Media expert thinks. And he answered very quickly. Hawaii is a beautiful place to visit. The state has only 445,000 television households. Honolulu's TV market, DMA, captures all of those homes and ranks as the number 65 market in the country. For that reason, Hawaii is not a great expansion option. Also, the travel is tough. Yes, the travel is incredibly difficult to Hawaii. It's a completely different world that you're going to play in. Um, On top of that, like Hawaii's had all kinds of issues, and their their new stadium is not going to be open until like maybe 2026. I think we talked about it on the show here. But there's just a ton of reasons why you wouldn't add Hawaii as a major power conference member. Uh, and that is if the Pac-12 still considers themselves to be a major power conference. I would imagine that they do, but regardless. Now, the other part of this is, could the Pac-12 be losing Colorado? Now, there have been... Multiple things that popped up uh, over the weekend. Jason Shear, of course, from Wildcat Authority, he he was in Vegas on the weekend, but on Friday, the uh, the Colorado Board of Regents held an executive meeting regarding its Pac-12 contract. It was originally not on the itinerary. And you can see there that uh, under recommended action, it says uh, they were trying to get legal advice on a specific matter, Pac-12 contract update. Now, that could mean a bunch of different things, right? Uh, the latest that's coming from the media rights negotiations, what do they think the school is actually worth, et cetera. The other part of this is the Colorado president gave an interview and did not mention staying in the Pac-12. I think that they are still, you know, as much as everybody is still talking about the Pac-12 trying to stay together, uh, I don't believe that everybody is fully bought in on staying together. Everybody wants to know what the options are. Right, The back door is always open. They can always go wherever it is that they want to go because nobody has signed anything just yet. Uh, It says, today in the Denver Gazette, Ted Salomon, president of the CU system, in an interview with the Denver Gazette, uh, was asked, while CU is all about academics, there's obviously another side with college sports. Is it worth the university's resource to keep up with these other institutions, such as USC or UCLA, who are leaving the Pac-12 for the Big Ten? How will their departure impact the university? And Salman said, we're currently in the process of figuring out those changes that are happening in the Pac-12 and the ripple effects that those will have throughout college athletics. We're committed to having competitive teams uh, for where we support student-athletes at both CU Boulder and UCCS. It's really important that UCCS has outstanding Division II sports also. But for many people, athletics is the front door for the University of Colorado. That's what they know about and hear about uh, that on our outreach trips. Uh, They pull up to talk about it. And we love to engage with them about it, but we also love to talk to them about the incredible education that we provide and the research that we do. But there's no doubt athletics are the front door for many people. I love going to the games, going to the meets, watching our athletes in action, but they are students first. They are student athletes. We are committed to doing right by them to help them get across the finish line also and have the support they need to be successful academically as well. At no point in there did he mention anything about staying in the Pac-12. All he mentioned is... Basically, we're in the process of figuring out the changes that are happening in the Pac-12. And that makes perfect sense because uh, what else would you do? I mean, there's no reason to say matter-of-factly that, yes, we are staying in the Pac-12. Colorado could certainly look at the Big 12. I don't know that they align academically with the schools in the Big 12 but does that necessarily matter when it comes down to TV contracts for your athletics programs? I, I don't know that it does. So you look at what you've got over in the Pac-10, Pac-12, whatever. And then you look at what the Big 12 has to offer. You try and figure out all these media negotiations. And then you make the best decision for your school and for those student-athletes. 
I think that's what gets lost in this is the more money that you can get from these TV deals, the better you can treat your athletes. Bottom line. So, I mean, it's what the all the G5 schools have been trying to do. UCF going to the Big 12 doesn't make a lot of sense regionally, but also, like, it, it makes about as much sense as the AAC that they did. I mean, it... <laughs> It, it's all it's all bananas, but the money issue is still a thing. Still a thing. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.